Today's number sense routine is more of a goal and lots of little things you can do to help with that goal. And that goal is counting to 100 or rote counting. I'll be honest with you, rote counting is probably one of my least favorite skills to work on with the kids because it requires a lot of repetition. It can be, get kind of tedious and a lot of times the kids who really need to be practicing with you are not practicing with you. And I taught uh, Spanish immersion, so I had two classes. So I'd have one class in the morning, so I counted to 100 of them in the morning, and then I had a class in the afternoon, we counted to 100 in the afternoon too. So I had two, I was counting to 100 twice every day, and I was just like, oh, I don't wanna do this anymore. So I'm gonna share with you some things that I did in my classroom to make it a little more fun, engaging, and really help the kids learn to count to 100. So backing up, why do you even need that. So let's take it back to just number in general. If I told you to picture the number five, what are you picturing? Are you picturing five fingers? Are you picturing five like pips on a dice? Are you picturing five dots? Like to really develop a concept of number, you need to know the symbolic representation. So the squiggle means five. You need to know the name of it and you need to know how many it is. So if you see this squiggle or you hear that word five, it means this many things. And when kids are starting to learn, and all of these three things need to be kind of learned together in order to make the most impact. And a lot of times the thing that can hold kids back from really being good counters or being able to match numerals to values is the number sequence, the rote counting, because it's not really, it's so abstract and they just sound like, like gibberish. Like when kids are, like for example, when kids are singing the alphabet song, they'll say like, L-M-N-O-P, thinking that's all one word and it's not. Those are all specific letters and the number sequence can be the same. It might be like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and like it doesn't have any meaning, like the different new numbers don't have a meaning. That's why the order, like the order can be confusing. It's just a mess. It's just a mess and we need to practice. So something I do with my kids is we'll start off at the beginning of the year from counting from one to 10. So we'll do one to 10 for like the first 10 days of school, right? And then, so each day we add our new number, we reveal our new number. I don't make a big thing of it. I was like, this is a, this is our number. This is what it looks like. And we'll stop there at the number. So like this is our number 11. And then we'll kind of keep counting until 20, even though we haven't revealed all those numbers yet. Those are the numbers we're practicing. So with each decade or each group of 10, there's a different movement that goes along with that counting. So for one to 10, we might be clapping like one, two, three, four. And then after we get to 10, we start a new movement. So maybe we're jumping. So we'll jump 11, 12, 13. So that way we are practicing the number sequence, but they're also kind of reinforcing the concept of one-to-one -one correspondence that each thing can be counted. So each numeral, each word that we're saying has a meaning and you're counting and it's one more than the previous one. So movement counting is something I use a lot. So counting in calendar math, the big reveal of the, the number of the day or the number of, of the number of schools you've been in is another way to include counting in your morning routine, as well as number songs. Songs really help students remember things in a different way. It taps into a different area of the brain and can help really create meaning. And it's a lot easier for a lot of kids to remember a song or a melody versus just words. So singing in morning meetings, singing about numbers, even skip counting if you're going to go to skip counting. All of those things really help with your number sequence and, and a song can help your kids remember. Speaking of counting, you have to count to 100 also backwards from 10 or backwards from 20. So something that I usually do for counting backwards specifically is it's called block stop counting. So we start like kind of scrunch like really small and we're starting at 10. So we'll be like 10, 9, 8, 7 like we're a rocket and then by the time we get to zero we're blasting off so we start really low like that you'll get your <laughs> your squat muscle in there like 10 9 8 and then blast off and that was something the kids really enjoyed too um that we're going up 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 and then we get to zero we get to stand up and we we we're we're out we're in space we're out in space together <laughs> now when in row counting there are some parts of the number sequence that are particularly tricky like the teen numbers are tricky or crossing a decade like from 29 to 30 39 to 40 also tricky. So there are some things you can do to focus in on just those tricky sequences so that your kids will be able to remember and then be able to count to 100 on their own. So one that you can do is counting around the circle, like the first person starts one, the next person two, three, four, trying to get all the way around the circle. Now, the only caution with that is that if your kid might be nervous, they might not remember, you have to decide if you're going to like help them out 
or if that's something that you think your kids can handle. And if not, maybe stay away from that game. Though, if we're talking about games, in morning meeting, you can also play a game called Pop. And the way that you play Pop is that you pick your number sequence. So it might be one, two, three, four, five. And then whenever they hear the number five, they need to pop and sit down. So it'd be one, two, three, four, and then they say pop. And the person who pops sits down. And then the next person starts again with one, one, two, three, four, pop and sit down, one, two, three, four, pop, and you can keep going until there's only one person standing up. So that game is really fun, kids pop, but it's also great for short number sequences that you wanna remember. So maybe not one to five, maybe you're wanting to do 11 to 15, or 15 to 20, or 18 to, I don't know, 25. Like it doesn't have to be specifically increments of five, it can be whatever you want, but really focusing in on a certain area that is tripping up your students so they're hearing it a lot in kind of a different way and it could be forwards or backwards so it might be backwards from 10 or forwards to whichever number and kind of going along with those trickier number sequences is choral counting i will link below to my blog post and video about choral counting that i've done and my podcast episode about choral counting and choral counting is a little bit more of a involved routine in the sense that it takes a little more planning from you the teacher to be able to do a choral count with their kids. It's not difficult, just you really need to think about it. Again, it's focusing on specific number sequences that you want your kids to notice, and it can be particularly helpful for helping kids understand the way that numbers work in the sense that why is there always a one in front of the T numbers and why does it go up this way? Why is there a five, 15, 25? Like why are there fives going down this line in the hundreds chart? Choral counting can be helpful in that sense of understanding how the number sequence works and then the kids being able to extrapolate those patterns that they're seeing in your small sequence to bigger sequences. I'll go more in depth in my choral counting video about how to do a choral count, how you're gonna record your thinking, your students thinking, and any planning that might be involved in doing a choral count. I will link that down below for you. So that if that's something that you're wanting to explore and dig into, you can really get more information there. If you're working on choral count, you have tricky number sequences, but a lot of times kids are getting tripped up on the decades. That was something that I really felt was hard for kindergarteners is to really get to 100 because of the decades, not necessarily because of the number sequence. Because we've been counting, you know, every day they understand the way that it goes. So if I said 29 and they got stuck and I said 30 and they could like go 31 and then keep going until they hit 39, get stuck on 40. The most helpful thing, the most helpful thing that I did was just had a song counting by tens that I did with the kids every day after we had counted to 100, like we celebrated the 100 day of school, it was February. Then I added in the counting by 10 song instead of counting by ones. And that really helped a lot of kids make the jump from getting stuck on like 29 or 39 to being able to get all the way to 100. So the song, I'm not a musician, so I'll sing it for you. But it was, again, in Spanish. So it went, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. So I really prompted the kids to learn that song because it can help you when you're counting to 100. So I would give them the example like, okay, if I am stuck on 59, so I'm going to say 58, 59, 60, well, it would be in Spanish, so 57, 58, 59, I could go back to my counting by 10 song and figure out what comes next. So 50, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, ooh, 60, I know that 60 or 60 is the one that comes next, and then I would say 60, 61, and keep going, and that really gave them the extra push that they needed to be able to count all the way to 100. So if you can, a number song, especially for skip counting, can be really helpful because skip counting, like row counting, is still very abstract. So something else that you could try is giving them some kind of problem solving situation that involves skip counting. So something I really enjoy doing is having images of dice, like there's a bunch of dice, all with a, a five face showing, and then they have to figure out how many there are altogether. So if they're skip counting, usually they can count pretty high. So the numbers can get a little bit trickier, they can get a little bit higher, but they're able to do that, and then start to kind of understand the value of skip counting, that it can help you count faster, can help you group things, and that kind of activity, especially if they're working with a partner, can really help them make connections. If they're all fives, they might be like, oh, well, I know the 10, so if I have two fives, I can make a 10. So I'm gonna group this in a 10, 10, 10. So then it starts to get into repeated addition, the beginnings of multiplication, really great way to make skip counting 
tangible to make it more concrete and to help kids see the value in it. So there was a lot of ideas there. I hope that you pick some that are helpful. Let me know in the comments which one you think was the most helpful, which one you are going to try, and I will see you next time.